give you all the praise in the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you that you have brought each one here safely today. We will return all the glory to you. We ask Almighty God that your hand will be upon the letter of today. And that Lord Jesus, what will transpire here today, we move this university forward. And we also move this nation forward in the name of Jesus Christ. And at the end of it all, your name alone will be glorified. In Jesus' great name, we have prayed. Amen. Please, while we remain standing, the Covenant University Band will lead us in the national anthem and the Covenant University anthem. The band, please. Thank you very much. May you please be seated. May I at this point in this event establish the protocol for the 11th inaugural lecture of Covenant University. The Chancellor and the Chairman, Board of Regents of Covenant University, Dr. David Oyedepu, ably represented by the second substantive Vice Chancellor of Covenant University, Professor Isaac Obayo, the Vice President Education, Living Faith Church Worldwide. Pastor of Mrs. Faith Oyedeku, esteemed members of the Board of Regents present, the Vice Chancellor of Covenant University, Professor A.A.A. Atayero, the Deputy Vice Chancellor, the Registrar, other Principal Officers of Covenant University, Deans of Colleges and School of Postgraduate Studies, members of the University Senate, the Lecturer, Faculty and Staff, Distinguished Guests, Kings and Queens in Hebron, members of the Press, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. May I at this point invite the Registrar of Covenant University for the next function. Please put your hands together for Dr. Olumuiwa Oludayo. The Chancellor, sir. I'd like to welcome every one of us to this 11th inaugural lecture of Covenant University. 
We're glad that God has continued to give us a platform to disseminate knowledge and to provide solutions to the challenges that our society currently faces. We trust that today, as we listen to the lecture and the lecturer, we would go away with insights that will enable us get relevant solutions for the issues that bedevil us. As we do this, please permit me to introduce key officers of the Covenant University to this audience. We have the Dean of Student Affairs, Dr. Timothy Anake. We receive you, sir. Thank you. Next to him is the Chaplain, Covenant University, Pastor Promise Omidiora. Next to Pastor Promise is the Director, Center for Learning Resources, Dr. Jerome Idiobunyose. We have here the Dean, College of Science and Technology, Professor Kolawali Ajanoku. The Dean, Host Dean for this lecture today, the Dean, College of Engineering, Professor Christian Bolu. The Dean, College of Business and Social Sciences, Professor Philip Alege. The Dean, College of Leadership Development Studies, Professor Amos Alao. The Dean of Deans, the Dean School of Postgraduate Studies, Professor Samuel Wara. Also here is the Deputy Vice Chancellor, Professor Shalom Chinedu. And our Vice Chancellor, Professor A. 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 Atairo. Permit me at this juncture to also specially recognize the second substantive Vice Chancellor of Covenant, representing the Chancellor, Dr. David Oedipo, today, Professor Isaiah O'Brien. You're welcome, man. At the appropriate time, a proper identification of our lecturer will be done. I trust that God will give us relevant insights for this event and for the future that is ahead of us. Welcome. Please let's put our hands together again for the Registrar of Covenant University. May I at this point please invite the Vice Chancellor of Covenant University for its welcome remark. Please put your hands together and recognize <laughs> Professor A. 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 Atairo. Please keep clapping, keep clapping, keep clapping. Thank you very much. The Chancellor and Chairman Board of Regents, Covenant and Landmark Universities, Dr. David O. Oyedepo, ably represented today by the second substantive Vice Chancellor of Covenant University and the immediate past Vice Chancellor of Landmark University, Professor Haize Obayan. the Vice President, Living Faith Church Worldwide, Pastor Mrs. Faith Oyedepo. I stand on the protocol as established. This 11th in the series of inaugural lectures of Covenant University is coming up as the first in the second 15-year cycle of this great institution. It is a such ushering in a five-year countdown towards the fulfillment of Vision 10 2022. Covenant University, a unique citadel with a compelling vision and unusual mandate. This vision is challenging previous and established rules of how to grow an institution in a rather disruptive manner. And as a result, it has placed Covenant in competition with universities that are several decades ahead of her. The Elsevier Cyber, which is a strategic data analytics tool employed by ranking bodies worldwide, reveals 
that Covenant has already emerged as a clear world leader in some distinctive com competencies. And I will just run us through some of those competencies and the things God has been doing in his own citadel. With over 660 publications, Covenant University produces 14% of the top 86 research authors in Nigeria. The authors were ranked among top 500 authors by the number of publications between the years 2012 and 2017. It will also interest this gathering to know that the output of Covenant researchers accounts for a significant percentage of publications recorded in Scopus in Nigeria in 2016. Particularly, 13.7% of the total engineering publication, 21.4% of the total computer science publication, 22.1% of the total business management and accounting publications, and a whooping 26% of the total publications recorded in Scopus for Nigeria in 2016, all came from Covenant University. This is in a country with a total of 155 universities, 40 federal, 46 states, and 69 private. You will agree with me that God is doing marvelous things in Covenant University. It is also amazing to note the Covenant has emerged the leading university in the field of engineering in Nigeria through innovative researches aimed at solving local problems with a view to attaining global prominence, a concept we fondly called globalization. It is equipped with these facts that we make bold to say that the attainment of Vision 10 2022 is a done deal and that by the grace of God. It is a known fact, however, that no country can join the League of Industrialized Nations without a strong base in engineering and manufacturing. It is for this singular reason that the Board of Covenant University has always placed a very high premium on the engineering discipline since our inception. Little wonder then that in 15 short years of our existence, Covenant has emerged as the top engineering institution in the country, as evidenced by the Elsevier data analytics I just shared. The lecture of this day becomes very germane then, as it addresses the salient issue of manufacturing engineering. And what a joy, what a joy that to do justice to this topic is none harder than an erudite professor of manufacturing engineering, a former HOD of the Department of Mechanical Engineering of this great citadel, Professor Festus Oyawale. I have no doubt in my mind that the lecturer will engage us maximally during the course of his lecture as it takes us from the historical perspective to the contemporary state of manufacturing engineering. Even while it gives us insight into its vast knowledge base on the happily crafted topic of today, talking about engineering and manufacturing. I therefore encourage you all to engage your minds as it takes us on the intellectual journey on the rails of manufacturing engineering. You're welcome. Thank you very much, sir. Please can we put our hands together again for the Vice Chancellor of Covenant University. We have all gathered today to listen to Professor Yawale do what he knows how to do best, to present a sumptuous meal of wonderful knowledge that has come out of deep research and deep thought. But we would appreciate his presentation better when we understand the nature of the person that is standing before us today that will be 
making the presentation. So to deliver a citation of the speaker today, please put your hands together as I invite Dr. David Olukoni to please come and read the citation of the speaker. Good afternoon, everyone. It is my honor and privilege this afternoon on this 11th inaugural lecture of Covenant University to read the citation of Professor Festus Adekunle Oyawale, the Chancellor, sir, on behalf of the family of engineering, the College of Engineering, may I request the inaugural lecturer of today, Professor Oyawale, to please rise and remain standing while I present his citation. Professor Oyawale started his education at the African District Central School, Agege. He continued at the African Church Secondary Modern School, Ifako, also in Agege. On completion, it was too small to be employed in the factory, and so sought and gained admission to Igbora High School, Igbora, Oyo State. He was the best graduating student in 1967. If you want to clap, you can do that. He took the concessional entrance examination to the then University of Ife to read pharmacy in 1968. He was admitted but his parents could not provide the funds for him to attend the university. At this time, the UNESCO came to Nigeria to establish the National Technical Teachers Training College for the training of technical teachers. He secured admission to this institution, which gave free boarding and tuition, even paid a monthly stipend of five pounds. It was the best NCE Tech graduating student in this institution and therefore was retained to lecture in the same institution for a period before going to the Federal Government College Maiduguri as a pioneer technical teacher in 1973. He later proceeded to Western Michigan University, Kalamazoo, on a Federal Government scholarship where he completed the Bachelor of Science in Industrial Engineering, a Bachelor of Science in Statistics, and a Master of Science degree in Operations Research. On his return to the country, he was posted to Igbo Egorin in Elaje Eseodo for the National Youth Service. He was the first youth corps that accepted to serve on this island. Many Nigerian trained youth corps had declined to serve on the island. During his service, he electrified the institution and built a VIP toilet for the college. This was against the general belief that it could not be done because the island was sand for as far as you can dig and the water table was just two meters. On completion, he returned to the Federal Ministry of Education headquarters in Lagos, where he worked in the Certificate Evaluation Unit of the Technical Section. He later transferred to the Federal Polytechnic EDA as a lecturer, where he rose to the rank of Chief Lecturer in the Mechanical Engineering Department. At this point, because of his love for academics, he proceeded to the University of Benin, Benin City, where he obtained a Doctor of Philosophy in Manufacturing Engineering in year 2000. During this period, he transferred his services to the University of Ibadan as a lecturer one and rose to the rank of a reader in Industrial Stroke Manufacturing Engineering. He later joined the staff of Covenant University, Otter in January 2011. Professional qualifications. He is a registered engineer with Council for the Regulation of Engineering in Nigeria, Corin. He is a member of the Nigerian Society of Engineers, NSC, Nigerian Institute of Industrial Engineers, NIE, and Nigerian Institution of Mechanical Engineers. 
He attended the entrepreneurship skills development, train the trainers workshop organized by the Kappa in Badagri in 1991. He is satisfied in AutoCAD 2007, Essentials, Autodesk Inventor Professionals, and Autodesk 2006. He is a system application products, SAP, certified with the Associate Business Formation with SAP ERP 6.0 EHPS. The Chancellor, sir, among the administrative appointments that have been held by the distinguished inaugural lecturer of today. He was the chairman of the Technical Support Unit, University of Ibado, acting head, Industry and Production Engineering Department, University of Ibadan, and he was the director of Covenant University Center for Research and Development, and chairman of the Research Engineering Stroke Casing Research Cluster. He was also head, Mechanical Engineering Department, Covenant University. He has successfully supervised six PhD graduates and is currently supervising three PhD projects. A round of applause for him. This is in addition to the undergraduate students, postgraduate diploma and master of engineering student that he is supervising. The research in progress, he is currently working on the design and production of a street sweeper and the design and manufacture of electric campus shuttle. He has carried out assessments for promotion to the rank of professor for federal and state universities. He was external examiner to two universities and federal polytechnics. He was consultant with the Nexus, where he was involved in the training of engineers for NNPC in Kaduna and Wari. He was also a consultant with the Dapman Consult, training senior technical staff for the Lagos State Government. He has published more than 70 papers in renowned journals and has three books to his credit. <laughs> Professor Oyawale is married to his wife, gorgeously dressed this afternoon, to Mrs. Esther Modupe Oyawale. They are blessed with children and grandchildren. <laughs> the Chancellor, sir, may we please, with a round of applause, rise on our feet as I present to us Professor Oyawale to give his lecture. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Please sit down. Thank you. Second substantive vice chancellor, Professor Isaac Obaya. The vice chancellor, Professor A. 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 Akairo. I want to stand on existing protocol. Preamble. First, I give all the glory, honor, and adoration to God for his manifold blessing upon my life to deliver this inaugural lecture. He has seen me through very trying periods and has never allowed any human to take the glory for my success. He taught me to trust absolutely and completely in him. The occasion today is a testimony to his goodness. To God be the glory forever been there for me from the cradle through the primary school and the high school. I was offered admission to read pharmacy that time at the University of Ife. But due to lack of funds, I had to attend the National Technical Teachers College, Yaba. I then began a teaching career at the NTTC Yaba, St. Margaret School, Elisha, and the Federal Government College, my Duguri from where I traveled to the United States of America as a federal scholar for my Bachelor of Engineering and Master's degrees. I taught at the Federal Polytechnic Ida, from where I proceeded to the University of Benin, where I obtained a PhD degree in Manufacturing Engineering. I later taught at the University of Ibadan, 
where I rose to the rank of reader before transferring my services to Covenant University, Ota. Who could have done all these if not God? There were obstacles, there were hurdles, and journey elongation. But I can proudly say that no man can take the glory for what God has done for me today. I take solace in Psalm 126, verse 1, which states that when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. Introduction. After nearly six decades of independence and a civil war, Nigeria is still a net exporter of raw materials and an insatiable importer of manufactured goods. Some might claim, albeit without much research, that the whole problem could be traced to the military interregnum. This simplistic con conclusion is not different from the typical way of attributing mysterious deaths to witchcraft, making further investigation and mitigation unnecessary. It is interesting to note that Nigeria has an array of technologists, technicians, engineers, and artisans. Many of these are more qualified than their counterparts in the industrialized countries. A host of Nigerian graduates are, are unemployed, while many more are partially employed. The Naira continues to slide against world currencies due to lack of productivity. A dollar which exchanged for 65 Kobo in the 70s at a time was exchanging for as much as 450 Naira. Nigerians are now investing in buying and selling with no value addition. In West African countries those days, they, they used to run after Muritala, the Nigerian 20 Naira bill. The Naira could be exchanged on the streets of London and New York. Is the situation redeemable? Can Nigeria regain the good old days? This is the purpose of this treatise. Manufacturing, the transformation of raw materials into finished goods, has been second to none among the known activities for sustainable international development. Machine tool is a sector of manufacturing which produces heavy machinery for all other industries. It's the springboard of rapid industrialization. American production of machine tools was a critical factor in the Allies' victory in World War II. Production of machine tools tripled in the United States in the war. No war was industrialized, more industrialized than World War II, and it has been written that the war was won as much by machine shops as by machine guns. The production of machine tools is concentrated in about 10 countries worldwide. China, Japan, Germany, Italy, South Korea, Taiwan, Switzerland, USA, Austria, Spain, and a few others. Machine tool innovation continues in several public and private research centers worldwide. Soon after World War II, the numerical control machine was developed. NC machines used a series of number, numbers punched on paper, tape, or punched cards to control their motion. In the 1960s, computers were added to give more flexibility to the process. Such machines became known as computerized numerical control, CNC machines. Numerical control and computer numerical control machines could precisely repeat sequences over and over and could produce much more complex pieces than even the most skilled tool operators. Previously, machine operators would usually have to manually change the bit or move the workpiece to another station to perform different operations. The next logical step was the combination of several different machine tools under computer control. These are known as machining centers and have dramatically changed the way parts are made. All the core facilities used in the transportation industry, construction industry, oil and gas industry, utility generation, agriculture and allied industries, military institutions, Academic laboratories and healthcare services are products of the machine tool industry. 
digital manufacturing systems allow manufacturing engineers to create the complete definition of a manufacturing process in a virtual environment. It can help manufacturing companies to improve their productivity in both manufacturing planning and production processes. In addition, robotics has reached a completely new level of sophistication. Adaptive manufacturing robots that can work next to humans are being developed to improve efficiency and increase productivity. In fact, they now man most assembly lines. Little wonder then that without the machine tools of sector, the clock of global civilization would have been rapidly reversed. Indeed, the level of sophistication of this manufacturing subsector has been the standing criterion for admitting members into the so-called G8, the cabal of most advanced nations. The degree of a nation's economic development and its sustainability is strongly tied to her level of homegrown machine tool industry. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, here lies the importance of your engineering faculty, the home of manufacturing and the mother of the machine tool sector. No nation has been tagged industrialized without this industry. It may please this important audience to note that this is the reason such oil nations like Saudi Arabia and Kuwait with very high per capita income are yet to be admitted into the League of Industrialized Nations. Let us take this case nearer home. The Alaja Steel Company and the Ajakuta Steel Company were both founded ostensibly to propel Nigeria along the path of industrial growth, but this dream has failed to materialize. As countries the world over strive to enlarge the scope of their industrial revolution via the use of iron and steel, Delta Steel Company, Owea Alaja, has remained idle for many years. Nigeria has a massive untapped raw reserve of iron ore. The mountain range spreading from Akoko Edo through Okene is iron ore. Heaps of partly beneficiated iron ore are bound at Itakwe because of the iron and steel industry that is comatose. As of 2015, the number of functional steel mills in the country had increased to 21 from less than five a few years back due to the implementation of Nigerian Industrial Revolution Plan. It was hoped that a vibrant steel sector would generate economic activities in downstream industries, creating job opportunities and acquisition of technical skills, and helping in the transfer of technology and provision of machine parts and tools. No company manufactures machine tools in Nigeria. The Nigerian machine tool, Oshobo, has since lost its mandate and is merely involved in the manufacture of a wide range of oil and gas industry stock bolts, fasteners, and flanges. Machine tool is the mother of all manufacturing, and no nation can become industrialized without it. This lecture is a discourse, premised, therefore, on the observation that without a strong home nurtured synergy between engineering and the core manufacturing subsector, our ship of industrial development may continue to go adrift. Accordingly, this lecture is in three parts, namely historical perspective, the industrial revolution and the engineering, manufacturing industry, the Nigerian journey so far, my humble contributions to manufacturing research historical perspective. At the onset of the Industrial Revolution in England, most of the manufacturing was carried out by craftsmen. Later, with the discovery of the steam engine, new machines were invented to carry out most of the manual chores. James Watt improved this with the introduction of the mechanization of in factories and the emergence of the first machine industry. The fallout of engineering practice was the Industrial Revolution when James Watt's steam engine and the Eli Whitney's cotton mill heralded the era of interchangeability and mass production. Adam Smith's concepts of division of labor and the invisible hand of capitalism introduced in his treatise The Wealth of Nations motivated many of the technological innovators of the Industrial Revolution to establish and implement factory systems. The efforts of James Watt and Matthew Bolton led to the first integrated machine manufacturing facility in the world, including 
the implementation of concepts such as cost control systems, uh, cost control systems to reduce waste and increase productivity. Efforts to solve these problems eventually yielded the discipline called industrial manufacturing engineering in America, industrial production engineering in Europe, and industrial engineering in Japan. According to the Nigerian Industrial Revolution of 2014, manufacturing plays a key role in the global economy. The demand for manufactured goods continues to rise as people around the world enter the global consumer class. Poor countries start off by employing the bulk of their population in agriculture. However, for these countries to transition into middle income or developed markets, they must create a robust industrial and, uh, industrial and services sectors, which are the drivers of mass employment, improved skills, and better wages, providing the foundations for long-run sustainable economic growth and advancement. Nigeria is not bereft of ideas. The Nigerian Industrial Revolution was therefore based on a philosophy of broadening the scope of industry and accelerating the expansion of manufacturing sector. In order to succeed in the rapidly evolving global manufacturing landscape, companies will need to embrace a targeted approach to some of the key elements of manufacturing competitiveness. Talent is ranked as being the most important of the key elements of manufacturing competitiveness. Rather than attracting foreign talents, Nigeria is losing her talents to the developed world. Among the advanced economies that are investing heavily in talent and technology, the United States has emerged as a clear leader, improving in overall uh, competitiveness going forward. Nigeria is expected to remain in the number 38 slot, as you can see on that table, in five years' time, while India, that is now in number 11 slot, is expected to move to up to number five in the next five years. Today, as Nigeria aspires to join the League of Developed Nations worldwide, we have a template to apply. The nation cannot continue to depend on the export of raw materials to the League uh, uh, to uh, raw materials to join the League of Industrial Countries. Manufacturing is a core mover of industrialization. Over many years, the, con the Nigerian manufacturing sector has failed to undergo the critical structural transformation necessary for it to play a leading role in economic growth and development. The sector is structurally weak and basic industries such as iron and steel are not fully in place. The technological base for manufacturing is lacking in many sectors. The dream of a strong industry that can tap into the iron ore value chain and build a competitive advantage around high value, high volume products further down the value chain in transportation and manufacturing is fast turning into a nightmare. My early engagements. In the early 80s in Ida, in the then Benue state, cyclostyling was the major means of producing mass copies of documents. Many schools, churches, and communities wasted a lot of time and money to get this service, as not many could afford to purchase the machine. A simple cyclostyling machine was designed and produced. The total cost of the machine was less than 1,000 naira. The project became popular with communities in the early 80s. It was economic to run, maintenance-free, and able to produce about 20 copies per minute. Project execution. My major encounter with real-time project execution was the design and manufacture of the torch and flame for the 19th Nigerian University Games, NUGA, which was held at the University of Ibadan in December 2002. The Faculty of Technology was mandated to produce the flame and torch for the games. A team comprising a member each from mechanical engineering, electrical engineering, and myself as chairman was appointed to execute the project. Our initial time estimate was eight weeks, but the approval for execution did not come until four weeks to the games. The LOC now had doubts as to the possibility of completing the project within the short period left. As an American trained engineer, I do not give a no for an answer. We were able to crash the project, and in two weeks, we had completed all the hardware 
but we had issues with the ignition and reignition of the flame, which stood on a tower four meters from the ground. The initial suggestion of a carbon arc could, be, could not be de uh, deployed since this would be consumed in the flame and could not be reused. The project was finally concluded on time using the spark plug ignition technology. My contribution to local content. Thank you. Thank you. Development of safety fuse plugs for use in the oil industry. Fusible plugs are some of the safety devices, some are used in some process industries, particularly in the petroleum industry. They contain low melting alloy that melt at predetermined safe temperatures, thereby preventing the buildup of excessive pressure in heated pressure vessels. The safety plug, uh, uh, plugs presently used in our equipment in the Nigerian industries are imported. This research was aimed, therefore, at developing safety fuse plugs using locally available materials, minerals from various mining sites in the country, and laboratory samples were collected. Beneficiation processes were carried out on the samples using foundry equipment. Impure ben and beneficial samples were mixed at various eutectic compositions to determine the effective mix and, uh, that would meet specific temperature blowouts. A comparative test was carried out on imported and developed samples. It was observed that there was no significant difference in the performance. My contributions to manufacturing. Manufacturing engineering is a discipline that deals with various manufacturing sciences and practices including the research, design, and development of systems, processes, machines, tools, and equipment. The manufacturing engineer's primary focus is to turn raw materials into a new or updated product in the most economic, efficient, and effective way possible. Manufacturing engineers develop and create physical artifacts, production processes, and technology. It is very broad area which includes the design and development of products. My love for the design option of industrial engineering propelled me to the University of Benin to pursue a PhD in manufacturing engineering. I have since been involved in the supervision of students' projects in this area for some time now. Contribution to design and fabrication. Cassava is a major root crop in West Africa, used for staple food in many communities. Generally, the processing is carried out by hand and this has been found to be wasteful and laborious. The varying shapes and size of cassava tubers have made cassava peeling to be one of the major problems in the mechanization of cassava processing. A cassava peeling machine was designed and constructed. The machine had an average capacity of 44.5 kilograms per hour. The, this machine has been deployed in some gari processing small scale businesses in Ibadan. Prototype development of uh, mini electric arc furnace. Electric arc furnaces have the capabilities required for furnaces used for metallurgical research because they provide a less contaminating environment. However, electric arc furnaces are usually large and are designed for big steel companies. As a result, they are not suitable for the small charges usually required in the laboratory experiments. This prompted us to develop an electric arc furnace to melt approximately five kilograms of steel or cast iron scraps using locally available raw materials. Design and construction of an autoclave. One of the major problems confronting healthcare professionals is the control of pathogenic organisms. This is because microorganisms are present in our environment and may contaminate healthcare instruments from time to time. The problem is further compounded in rural areas of sub-Saharan Africa where there is no electricity. This project was informed by a finding during a short course on biomedical engineering when me medical practitioners from Amadou Bello University area indicated that their autoclave could not be repaired due to non-availability of spare parts. This was also the case at the University of Ibadan Teaching Hospital. An autoclave was designed and constructed to sterilize the materials and items used in such healthcare uh, institutions. My contribution to materials research, welding and welding electrode manufacture. Welding is a process critical to our present state of civilization and technical advancement. A survey of the building, machinery, and automotive trades shows how much we depend on the welding process. 
which is a fundamental part of the process of building most of what we depend on daily, including vehicles, buildings, appliances, bridges, and a great deal more. In fact, once we really start to examine the objects around us, it is hard to imagine our world without welding. Certainly, all large commercial and residential structures are built with considerable skeleton of welded structural steel. Everywhere you look in the modern world, you will find examples of how widespread and important the use of welding techniques and equipment is. The demand for welding electrodes is directly proportional to the steel consumption in any country. Despite the local content clamor and pressure mounted on the Raw Materials Research and Development Council in Nigeria, with a view to sourcing wire, flux, and binder locally, only little success was recorded. As at 1998, all the raw materials, including core wire for electrode manufacture in Nigeria, were still being imported, despite prohibit prohibitive tariffs introduced by government. We went ahead to debunk the claim by foreign technical partners of the electrode manufacturers, uh, by foreign te uh, technical partners of electrode manufacturers, that materials for the manufacture of electrode coating flux could not be sourced locally in Nigeria. The initial effort was resisted by local manufacturers who prevented us from entering their factories. Ilmenite, a raw material which is a waste product from processing of iron or of tin, is available in heaps in Jos, Plato State, Nigeria. This mineral was used as the core local material. Other materials such as limestone, sand, feldspar, and palm fruit residue were sourced locally. Using these raw materials, various metal arc coating fluxes were formulated. A small quantity was produced by a friendly company for commercial tests. In addition, we went on to explore the possibility of using locally sourced wire in electrode production. The foreign technical partners insisted that only blast furnace steel could be used as core wire. But most steel used in the country came from the direct reduced ion from Alaja in Delta State. This is therefore necessarily the parent metal of most structures welded in the country. Hence, this research rods rolled in this research, rods rolled at the Oshobo Rolling Company and drawn into wire at Ilesha in southwestern Nigeria from billets produced at Delta Steel Company Alaja in Delta State, Nigeria, was used with commercial flux in a production run by a local electrode machine outfit, manufacturing outfit. Mechanical tests and macrostructure show that the quality of electrodes produced compared favorably with E6010 standards. World metal property optimization from flux ingredients. In this paper, we presented a new methodology for met, uh, weld metal properties optimization from welding flux ingredients. The methodology integrated statistical design of uh, mixture experiment with mathematical programming optimization technique. The mixture experiment was responsible for the modeling of the weld metal properties as a function of welding flux levels, while mathematical programming optimized the model. Data and, uh, uh, and confirmed models from the literature were used to pro, uh, perform optimization on the responses. The maximum uh, values possible with the prevailing conditions for a circular ferrite, chappy, impact toughness, and silicon transfer were as uh, listed. Quality characteristics of basic hand tools sold in Nigeria. Hand tools uh, sold in Nigeria have become increasingly unreliable due to critical failures during use. This research was triggered by an accident that resulted in a poor, uh, from a poor quality cold chisel that chipped during use, causing serious injury to a mechanic and the disappointment from a poor quality wheel spanner. A lot of hand tools were dumped in Nigeria carrying spurious claims of drop forging. The objective of this study was to test samples of these tools vis-a-vis -vis the manufacturer's claims. A total of 15 hand tools from six different uh, countries available on the Nigerian market were tested for their quality characteristics. The tested tools included spanners, hammers, screwdrivers, pliers, and chisels. Only five of the 15 selected hand tools conformed to British Standard 876 of 1981 and were judged safe and reliable. 
quality characteristics of concrete poles manufactured in the Ibadan metropolis. In, Ibad, uh, in Nigeria, power is generally transmitted by overhead transmission lines fixed on wooden or concrete uh, poles. Often times, these poles collapse under excessive load occasioned by storm and accidents. This project work was to determine the quality characteristics of concrete electric poles used to carry overhead conductors in the Ibadan metropolis of Nigeria. The test results showed that all the samples on which the core and family tests were carried out fell short of the required standard. The results showed that the manufacturers did not use right ratio of materials, the mode of mixing of the aggregates was not adequate, and casting uh, allowed voids or space, uh, uh, air space, which made the poles permeable, and the period of curing of the poles was not adequate. Almost all the poles were found to be below standard. It was observed that most of these manufacturers had approval from the Ministry of Mines and Power. The genuineness of most of the tests supplied on, uh, as basis for the approval was doubtful. Manufacture of abrasive grinding wheel using silicon carbide abrasive materials. Abrasive materials are materials of extreme hardness that are used to shape other materials by a grinding or abrading action. And they are used either as loose grains, uh, as grinding wheels, or as coating on cloth or paper. A grinding wheel is made of very small, sharp, and hard silicon carbide abrasive particle or grits held together by strong porous bond. The manufacture of silicon carbide abrasives and grinding wheel in Nigeria has been severely impeded by the difficulty of identifying suitable local raw materials and associated local formulation for abrasives and grinding wheel with global quality standards. The paper presented a study on the formulation and manufacture of abrasive grinding wheels using silicon carbide uh, abrasive grains in Nigeria. Suitability of selected Nigerian ceramics for dental porcelain manufacture. Nigeria possesses a large expanse of untapped ceramic resources, which has wide applications, including the production of dental porcelain for restorative dentistry. However, despite the tonnage of dental porcelain consumed daily for teeth restorations, there is no known proprietary method and center for the production of dental porcelain in Nigeria. This research was designed to evaluate the suitability of Nigerian ceramics and develop an algorithm for dental porcelain manufacturing. With this ongoing research, <clears throat> the stage is now set for the exploitation of local kaolin for the manufacture of dental replacements. Hitherto, most of the ingredients for the manufacture of polyurethane foam were imported. A preliminary study was carried out on the effects of castor oil on the properties of polyether-based polyurethane foam, such as rising time, density, hardness, tensile strength, compression, elongation, and heat aging. Castor oil was introduced into the polyurethane foam by partially substituting it for silicone oil through seven experimental setup based on the laboratory mix formulation on 500 gram polyether-based polyol with 0%. 20, 40, 50, 60, 80, and 100 percent castor oil substitutions. Reverse engineering and Kaizen research cluster. Often, there has been grumbling or outright criticism of an organization. This could be just about anything. Kaizen, which is Japanese, in Japanese means continuous improvement, seeks to channel such undercurrents into meaningful suggestions that can improve the system. Kaizen is being introduced in the Mechanical Engineering Department uh, of Covenant University as a test case before its university-wide application. In addition, the reverse engineering <coughs> research cluster has continued to work on indigenizing a, a lot of technology. <coughs> Sorry. The sweeper research and the solar campus shuttle and a few other products, uh, the, uh, product development projects fall in this category. Maintenance. <coughs> Maintenance includes activities required or undertaken to conserve as nearly and as long as possible the original condition of an asset or resource while compensating for normal wear and tear. It comprises actions 
necessary for retaining or restoring a piece of equipment. A piece of equipment, machine, or system to the specified operable condition to achieve maximum useful life. It includes the three major processes, namely predictive maintenance, preventive maintenance, and breakdown or corrective maintenance. Despite the fact that preventive and corrective maintenance have been ext uh, applied extensively, they have been found to be expensive due to loss of production, cost of keeping spare parts, and quality deficiencies. On the other hand, predictive or condition-based maintenance differs from preventive maintenance in that it strives to identify incipient faults before they become critical. Although many failure modes are not age-related, most of them give some sort of warning that they are in the process of occurring or about to occur. <coughs> Evidence can be found that something is in the final stages of a failure. It may be possible to take action to prevent it from failing completely and or to avoid consequences. In practice, there are many ways of determining whether failures are in the process of occurring. If a potential failure is detected between point P and point F, it may be possible to take action to prevent the functional failure or at least to minimize the effects. Uh, the effects. Tasks designed to detect potential failures are known as condition monitoring tasks. The amount of time uh, or the number of stress cycles which elapse between the point where a potential failure occurs and the point where it deteriorates into a functional failure or, or the warning period during which continuous uh, 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 condition monitoring tasks can be used to detect the onset of failure is known as the PF interval, as shown in the figure. <clears throat> the PF interval governs the frequency with which predictive tasks must be done. For different failure modes, the PF interval uh, can vary from fraction of a second to several decades, like in bridges. Most issues of poor infrastructure and machinery in Nigeria can be traced to lack of maintenance culture. Current research, street sweeping, using local brooms and packers is laborious, time-consuming and dangerous. Street sweepers are always under stress and extreme body pains during and after work during or due to continuous abnormal posture. This study, therefore, was aimed at creating a system for effective sweeping while minimizing associated bodily stress. Our first effort was to use the sucking method. The, the brushes were arranged to dislodge the debris, which was sucked through a hose into a packing compartment. Our next effort was a machine that simulates the traditional method of sweeping, which was developed and produced using locally, uh, local raw materials. A comparison between the developed mechani mechanical street sweeping and handheld broom uh, sweeping on streets and major roads showed significant improvement in the time taken swept area, output energy, and their corresponding efficiencies. <clears throat> Genetic algorithm approach for optimization of silica extraction for microcrystalline silicon production. The scarcity of uh, microcrystalline silicon, a major component used for reactive solar collectors in the solar industry, has led to the search for alternative techniques for its extraction. Despite the several efforts on silica production from biomass wastes, little is known about research on microcrystalline silicon produced from extracted biomass wastes in Nigeria. This research focused on the use of genetic algorithm for selecting optimal temperature and time for silica extraction from rice husk as uh, rice husk ash to produce microcrystalline uh, silicon. This research was a milestone in that it mapped out a major utilization for rice husk that has been dangerously incinerated in the open environment, oblivious of the fact that the fumes have been traced to cancer. Strategies for pertinence. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, Nigeria is endowed with tremendous human and natural resources. Despite these, the nation is still groaning under the yoke of un unemployment, poverty, and insecurity. Portable water is still a luxury for the people who live in special areas. Power has remained epileptic, 
and there is general decay of infrastructure. To turn this tide, several researchers have proposed several solutions to the hydra-headed quagmire that has engulfed the nation. I have also looked at the problems of the country, and I want to assure the audience that the challenge of pertinence is not insurmountable. Nevertheless, Psalm 1133 states that if the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? The foundation of engineering has been neglected for too long. STEM has been the basis for development in many industrialized countries. Nigeria has fallen behind in the global market as other nations have gained competitive advantage by asserting their scientific and technological leadership. STEM will elevate Nigeria's position in the global economy and give our students the skills they need to successfully compete with talent from around the world. Currently, science, mathematics, and introductory technology have been relegated to the background in our secondary schools. Workshops in the secondary schools have been vandalized where they existed, and where some skeletons exist, there are no trained teachers to man them. The first step is to revive all these in the secondary schools to provide the ingredients for the production of the much needed engineers, technologists, and technicians, the prime movers of industry. The practice of exporting crude products and raw materials has to stop. The automobile, the train, the aircraft, and the ship are made of thousands of components produced in several countries. Universities should acquire state-of-the-art high-tech equipment for training students in the six geopolitical zones of the country. This will provide the basis for successful incubators and startup villages. It is very clear that without the production of machine tools, our hands are tied behind our backs. The race for mass-produced and affordable electric automobiles has heated up. It is sad to believe that Nigeria did not participate in this race. We can only pray that this country does not become the mortuary for all the petrol cars that will be phased out in the developed world in the very near future. Students' projects and local entrepreneur, entrepreneurship efforts should be geared towards the production of automotive and machine components. Nigeria could become an exporter of automotive, automobile components to the developed world. Components production is the first step in any industrialization program. There is no automaker. <clears throat> there are only auto assemblers. The situation where agreements with Daimler Benz, Pojo, Volkswagen, Fiat, and Leland all failed where they while they succeeded in India and Brazil is questionable. This is perhaps attributable to the fact that foreign partners, foreign technical partners of the automobile manufacturers did not intend to develop local technology and there was no political sting to affect their compliance with signed agreements. They only intended to make captive markets for their products. Nigeria could, in the near future, become an assembler of automobiles and heavy machine tools. The establishment of private steel companies as, uh, uh, is in the right direction and should be encouraged. To this extent, restrictions should be placed on the importation of completely assembled automobiles. We do not need the gift of fishes. Rather, we need the training to catch the fish, courtesy Dr. David Oyedepo. Using the China experience, the time to the market should be drastically reduced by building the various requirements for commercialization into the development stage of our products. What stops Nigeria from producing the steel profiles and railroad cars required for our rail transportation? Even cast and other brake parts for the locomotive are still largely imported. Nigeria should embark heavily on the provision of tooling for mass production of auto bodies and machine tools. With the electric engines now available for imports, the nation could use the Korean model to get into the race for electric vehicles. The era of mere paper publishing is over. We have to put the research to work. I would like to put on record that the management of Covenant University Otter has been blazing the trail in the provision of high-tech training equipment, a 3D printing machine and a CNC machining center in the mechanical engineering department, which is fast establishing a working relationship with the private manufacturing outfits to produce components for the open market or tailor-made for the oil and gas sector through additive manufacturing. Patronage is, however, being hampered by the non-cooperation of multinationals who still insist 
that Nigeria does not have the capacity to produce such sensitive parts. The strategic business unit of this university, in our tradition of being the first, could blaze the trail in the development of tooling and production of machine tools in Nigeria and eradicate the continuous dumping of uh, poor technical artifacts in the country. Other problems facing Nigeria include waste and lack of accountability, waste of time, waste of resources, and indiscipline. You wait unnecessarily everywhere, and the server seems oblivious of those in the queue. I suggest that essentially, our systems are turned to cost centers where we can track fiscal responsibility. With 148 universities, 115 polytechnics, and 187 technical colleges, our institutions should become centers of excellence. Departments that are not subscribed should be closed down. Governments should give grants to students rather than to universities. This will facilitate a better use of facilities and enhance productivity. Concluding remarks. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, in the course of my lecture, I've been able to underline the symbiotic relationship between manufacturing and global pertinence. It, it, it even has close ties with customized mechanization of agricultural production to guarantee food security. For Nigeria to become self-sufficient in food production, basic hardware manufacturing has to be taken more seriously. For all the foregoing to be achieved, sir, engineering and manufacturing is sine qua non. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Acknowledgements. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, it is impossible to conclude this lecture without giving my profound gratitude to Almighty God, the Alpha, the Omega, and my sustainer for making this day a reality. I am what I am today because of God's infinite mercies. To him be all the glory. I thank the Chancellor, Dr. David Oyedepo, the visioner, the prophet of our time, for this platform upon which this lecture is delivered. May the Lord grant him long life and good health to nurture this institution to his dream of one of 10 in 10, now in five. I wish to thank the Vice Chancellor, Professor A. 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 Atayero, and the management team for their total dedication and commitment to the realization of Vision 10 2022, the prophetic verdict that we are all running with. I thank my parents, Chief David Ishalao Yawale, and Mrs. Oyinlola and Ike Oyawale, both of blessed memory, for their love and sacrifice to give me the right foundation for the future that I now enjoy. If not for my mother, I would have ended up in a trade center after leaving the secondary modern school. I also want to thank my stepmother, Mrs. Miriam Adetung Oyawale, and my stepfather, Pai Redele Olopade, both of blessed memory, for their great contribution when I needed it. They were indeed my greatest mentors. I extend my sincere greetings to all, everyone that I have come across in every aspect of my life, from the son of a Lagos carpenter to professor of mechanical engineering. <laughs> they have in one way or the other influenced my total being, thus making this day possible. In a situation like this, where so many people have affected one's life positively, one runs the risk of offending many people if some names are acknowledged and others are not. I apologize if I fail to mention you expressly and in the course of this lecture. I appreciate all of you. I wish to thank Professor Isaiah Obaya, the second substantive vice chancellor, for influencing my decision to join the staff of Covenant University, OTA, and Professor C.K. Ayo, the immediate past vice chancellor, for his sustained support. I wish to thank my colleagues and staff of the Department of Mechanical Engineering, Covenant University, Ota. I wish to thank my supervisors, Professor Aki Ibadode, Vice Chancellor of the University of Petroleum Resources, Efurun, and Professor G.C. Ovuwore of the University of Benin. I wish to thank Professor Iduwo Layinka, the Vice Chancellor of the University of Ibadan, for his continuous support, and my esteemed colleagues and staff of Industrial Engineering Department, University of Ibadan. In particular, I thank Professors Oliver Ekwere, Charles Owaba, Ayo Oluleye and Dr. O.G. Akambi. I wish to thank my former students, especially engineer Dr. O.O. Ogunleye, engineer Professor A.O. Odio, engineer Dr. A.D. Adeyeye, engineer Dr. Lamide Olawale, engineer Dr. M.A. Bolaniwa, 
Engineer Dr. Oluropo Oyetunji, Engineer A.A. Adebeshin, Engineer A.O. A. Owodolu, and my present students, Engineer Abraham Awonide, Engineer P. Azeta, Engineer Felix Ishola, and Engineer C.O. Ajayi. I thank my friends, Chief Olado Konfatogun, Mr. Olubun Ewa Johnson, Honorable Yewale Akini Ade, Oba Samson, uh, Shobaloju, Gwadebori of Alakpata, if enough, Mr. Adebisi Adeniron, Reverend Dr. Sunday Awonide, thank you for being there for me. I appreciate the support of our unique club, it's the 80 First Work Society, alumni of Ibuara High School, and alumni of National Technical Teachers College for keeping the flame of friendship burning. I wish to thank my sisters, Mrs. Christiana Shotayo, Mrs. Felicia Obafemi, Mrs. Comfort Ajibade, for their assistance in the tender years. My nieces, Mary Nubi, Remy Akindele, Olayemi Ayonbule, Oluyem, Oluwato Insholanke, Folusho Lawal, Yinkajola Olu, Folash Adeti Amiyu, my nephews, Adewale Obafemi, and Lekon Ujo. I wish to thank my wife siblings, Aremu Lashore, Biodun Lashore, Mrs. Juliana Adeyemo, Mrs. Olufumelayo Guniyi, Sunday Abe, Mokbe Abe, Akin Abe, Folu Kaji Folokun, and their children, Bosse Mutiu, Taye, Ido Wutosin, Caroline, Adeniron, Adeniyi, and Adebi. I want to thank my wife of inestimable value, Mrs. Esther Mudukbe Oyawale. My darling, my friend, my sister, my mother, my confidant, a bundle of joy for her immense love, comfort, and counseling. And my children, Olubenga, Olushegun, Olushola, and Akinyemi, for giving us joy. My daughters-in-law, Titi Layo, and Bukola Oyawale, and my grandchildren, Adeola, Adeolu, Adekweju, Adenike, Aderonke, Adebinkwe, and Adebola. I want to thank my father-in-law and a very good friend, Mr. Olabo Adewofadeju. Lastly, to everyone who has been associated with me in one way or the other, I say thank you very much for affecting my life positively. Thank you, sir. Can we please continue to put our hands together? for the wonderful presentation that we have all been treated to. Thank you very much. Please, you may be, please be seated. At this point, I'd like to respectfully invite the Vice Chancellor of Covenant University to please perform the next function. The Vice Chancellor, sir. Please, let's put our hands together for the Co uh, Vice Chancellor of Covenant University. May we please rise as I respectfully invite the Chancellor and Chairman Board of Regents of the Nigerian University, Dr. David Oyedele, ably represented by the second substantive Vice Chancellor of the Nigerian University, Professor Isaac Obaya, to give his remarks. May I request us all to please be seated. Thank you. It is an honor and privilege this evening to represent the Chancellor Covenant University on the occasion of the 11th inaugural lecture of Covenant University. The Chancellor is unavoidably absent. He desired to be here, but other pressing engagements has made it impossible. And therefore, I am standing in his shoes, and whatever he would have said and the message he has asked me to pass across to us, I will deliver to my utmost ability but whatever errors may be committed, I take full responsibility. And so this afternoon, I again ask us to please put our hands together for the lecturer of the 11th inaugural lecture, Professor Festus A. Oyawale. The title and the subject of the discourse this evening, Engineering, Manufacturing, a sine qua non for pertinence. 
a lot of thought-provoking issues have been put across. May I this evening recognize members of management ably represented here this evening and led by the Vice Chancellor, Professor A.A.A. Atayero. Members of Senate, distinguished guests among us, Professorate of Covenant University, our dear students, may I specially recognize the darling of Professor Oyawale this evening, who is so many things, and members of the family, our dear guests, grandparents in the house, I welcome you to Covenant University on this occasion. May I again observe all protocols and thank the lecturer for today for giving us this wonderful treat. Certainly we cannot underestimate the relevance of engineering manufacturing to industrialization and also to national development. A lot of issues have been raised this afternoon and definitely, as we look at addressing our indigenous challenges, which definitely Covenant University has actually set herself right in place for since inception in 2002. I know that the chancellor many times would say it doesn't have to be right to be, it doesn't have to be white to be right. Again, in the pages of this particular lecture, that has come alive again and again. He did say the era of mere paper publications is over. We have to put research to work. If the chancellor were here, I know he would emphasize leadership by product. Far away, some years ago in South Africa, he came across a caption on an advert, Samsung leadership by product. I am right now also thinking about the fact that this particular inaugural lecture has emphasized and actually put a lot of things in place for us to take leadership in this part of the world by the products we are able to bring to the fore. And may I say that today's lecturer has thrown out a lot of challenge in this direction. A lot of contributions to several platforms as enumerated in this particular inaugural lecture. It's not just about rhetorics, it's about the action that must come forth in work like this. May I also say that efforts in this direction would have to be purely intentional. There has to be a focus, and again, as has been retorted on several platforms, STEM is part of this in intentional effort. Again, Governments of the day and also proprietor base for educational institutions like this. And I know that Covenant University is certainly blazing the trail in this direction. Listening to the Vice Chancellor's welcome remarks, Covenant University blazing the trail in engineering, not just in the research papers, but lots of products to show. I believe. We owe God all the applause in this direction. It's not just about talking the talk, it's about putting action into the talk. And definitely the incubation centers, the startup companies. We have a center for research, innovation, and development. A lot of billions have gone into that in terms of working on the next stage that Covenant University is to go. And I want to appreciate God for what he has continued to do via the visionary leadership across several platforms as innovations and creativities are brought on board to bear. May I, as I continue in these remarks, bring to the fore that which continues to stir up the pride that we have in place of a university talking about Covenant University, blazing the trail in engineering, blazing the trail in computer science, blazing the trail in business management, and having about 26% of the, of, of the research publications in Scopus for Nigeria, talking about 2016 to date. 
This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. I couldn't help thinking about the reference to Exodus 31, and I'm asking myself that this is a wake-up call for the Bezalels and Aholiabs to arise so that they are able to work with all manner of craftsmanship. We cannot talk about innovation, industrialization, and breakthroughs just by publications. We must turn these publications to products. Again, I congratulate Professor Oyawale. Well done. Congratulations. And thank you for not just taking on the professorial chair. A lot of work has been going on. And one begins to imagine that it's not about just taking on board that title of becoming a professor. There must be action following the attainment of that level. And again, bringing it back home to what the inaugural lecture series should be about, inviting town to meet with gown and bring it on board that which a university is able to showcase. And of course, challenging thought as to the next directions that we should all be going. Indeed, engineering and manufacturing, a definite necessity without any question whatsoever, a sine qua non for pertinence. Let us again put our hands together as we congratulate the 11th inaugural lecturer of, lecturer of Covenant University. Thank you very much for being here. God bless you all. Let's put hands together again for the Master for the Chancellor of Governance University, ably represented by Professor Isaac Olayemi. Thank you very much. You may please have your seats. It is now time to say a big thank you to everyone for coming. And I have the single honor of inviting the head of department of Mechanical Engineering Department in Covenant University. That's the head of the department of uh, Professor Oyawali. Please put your hands together for Dr. Sunday, who he comes on stage. Please let's put our hands together again. The Chancellor, sir. Permit me to stand upon the established protocol. It is my privilege and honor to have been called upon to give the vote of thanks on this historic event. First of all, I would like to deeply appreciate Almighty God who has made this a very memorable day and for his countless blessings. Many thanks to the Chancellor and the management team for making today a reality. I would like to deeply appreciate the lecturer of today. Thank you for your very interesting and thought-provoking lecture. Your presentation is an high opener to the way forward of Nigeria's economy from engineering manufacturing perspective. On behalf of the management of Covenant University, I extend very hearty thanks to all those who made this inaugural lecture a sweet memory to carry home. We, all, we are also very grateful to all the dignitary whose presence has been an additional dimension to this significant event in Covenant University. We also express our deep sense of gratitude to all the distinguished invited guests who have, in spite of their personal busy agenda, given priority to this event. Last but not the least, I would like to say thank you to everyone present especially the queens and the kings in Hebron. Thank you all for coming. I wish all God's protection and journey mercies to your various destinations. Thank you and God bless you. Thank you very much, sir. Not to repeat all the thanks that have already been said today, I'd like to just 
acknowledge one or two distinguished personalities that are here. I'd like to recognize Oba Shobaluju Alapata Ife. Please, let's put our hands together. You're welcome, sir. He's here with his entourage. You're welcome, sir. We appreciate you for coming. We also have distinguished personalities from across board, both universities and the industry, whom we will not be able to mention everyone today. But we want to appreciate every single person we have representing, interestingly, from surveying, from plumbing, we have from the academia, like FUNAB, UI, Lautech, Bells University, we have from Ambrose Ali University, and so on and so forth. We appreciate every single one. Please, can we put our hands together for all the distinguished persons that we have here? I'd like to also like to emphasize how important this event is, such that we have wonderful media coverage because of the distinguished presentation of our dear professor. We have representatives from the nation newspaper. Please, let's put our hands together. From Mr. Degule, we have uh, Esther Bakari from Daily Times. We have Sadiet Alausa from The Point. We have Femi Ige from News Agency of Nigeria. And we have Victoria from Guardian newspaper. Please, let's put our hands together. Such a wonderful presentation cannot go unreported. I'd like to announce, please, that uh, there is an entertainment at uh, the Center for Learning Resources, which is across the building, across this place. It is for our special guests, the members of the Senate and senior uh, faculty of Covenant University. So you're all invited. Thank you very much. Please, can we put our hands together again for the awesome experience that we have had there today? We started this program with prayer and would like to conclude with prayer. I'd like to invite the chaplain of Covenant University to please come and perform the next function, the chaplain, sir. Please, let's put our hands together. Please, shall we rise? Father, Lord, we want to appreciate you today because you began with us and here we are at the end of the lecture. Thank you for your hand upon the lecture of the day. Thank you, Almighty God, for the issues that have been raised. We give you praise because we trust you that this will move the nation forward. This will move this university forward. Your name alone will be glorified. We trust you, Almighty God, that everyone you have brought here safely today, you will take each one back to his or her destination in peace, to the glory and the honor of your name. Father, Lord, we give you praise. In Jesus' great name, we have prayed. Amen. While we remain standing, the band will lead us in the Covenant University Anthem. The band, please.
Now shall have the band continue to play as we have the procession in reverse order. The band, please. <laughs> 